The Lord be with you. you. Welcome to worship this morning. It's good to have all of you here. My mic doesn't seem to be wanting to cooperate. It's great to have all of you here. Had several mic issues today. 
Is that better? (laughs) Sometimes you just have to, like your computer at home, you just have to restart it, right? (laughs) Well, it's great to be gathered together in worship as we join in worshiping our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shall we pray? Lord, as we come before you in this epiphany season, we look for your life and your light And we pray that it would live in our hearts and be with us here as we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We rise for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you call us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news in Christ Jesus, Your sins are forgiven. Your descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, inheritors of eternal life, live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. We join together in our gathering hymn, Lift Every Voice and Sing, and it's a two-page hymn. It's on the very back of your worship folder there, back inside cover. Lift Every Voice and Sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Living God in Christ, you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I invite the children forward for the children's message.
But you can always do that right in the moment. So you can remember how much Jesus loves you all the time using you and so love other people. He is caring and kind. All those things that we do when we love people, okay? Did you can find that? Not this tomorrow. Dear Jesus, we thank you for loving us so much that we pray that you would help us to show that love to the world by words, by actions, by things we do, so that people would know how much you love them. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Tina. We can go to Mr. Stag in your there, and he is going to issue your jam song. Our first reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. And as you can guess, Jeremiah, not very happy. (laughs) (laughs) Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in parched places in the wilderness, in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is Psalm 1, and we'll read it responsibly. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seat of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. Our second reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that God raised Christ, whom God did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then also those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are above all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
who rise for the gospel as we join in the gospel acclamation, Christ is the King. According to St. Luke, the sixth chapter, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds that your word and Holy Spirit would dwell within us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we are journeying with Jesus, and he is out preaching in Galilee again. All throughout the season of Epiphany, when we're in the Gospel of Luke, people recognize Jesus because he is out and preaching, because he's out and doing, showing signs and wonders healing, casting out demons. It's an amazing show, and they want to be a part of it. They want to see what's going on, and Jesus here with the twelve and a great crowd of his disciples are gathered on a level place, on a plain, and it says there's a huge multitude of people from Judea, Jerusalem, from Tyre and Sidon, and and if we don't read that carefully, we might just think they're listing off places. But imagine for a moment, I am the land of Palestine. Well, here is Judea and Jerusalem, and here is Tyre and Sidon. So it's all over. <laughs> they're saying, Luke is saying, from all over the place, people had come and gathered to be there, to come and hear Jesus. And, and this is Luke's big version of um, the big sermons that Jesus did. In Matthew, we have the Sermon on the Mount, and in Luke, we have the Sermon on the Plain. <laughs> and we're not surprised that there's a big multitude of people who have gathered. We may be surprised a little bit that there's a great crowd of Jesus' disciples around, because really, in our heads, we think it's 13 guys bumbling around in the dust, don't we? 
because that's what it is in all the movies, because it's so much cheaper than having to pay a couple hundred extras to hang around with Jesus everywhere he goes. But Jesus is there, and he is teaching, and he is healing people, and the healing that Jesus is doing is occurring so powerfully that people are just reaching out to touch him, and they are receiving healing. And that way, Jesus is really recreating all the way back to Genesis 1, when the power of God brings the whole universe into existence with just a word. And in the Sermon on the Mount, after Jesus goes into the Beatitudes, it's all done. But here in Luke, we're going to get an expanded Beatitudes. Jesus looks up at the disciples around him and says, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are, who are hungry, who are mourning. When people speak ill of you, blessed are you. For that is what they did to the prophets. That's the kind of company that you are in. But it goes on, doesn't it? It doesn't stop there, like in Matthew. In Matthew, it's more of a spiritual condition, isn't it? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Luke is talking about the physical reality that the people are living with. Blessed are you who are poor, who are hungry, who are reviled. But Jesus goes on. And he goes on with a series of woes, which is really in keeping with many of the traditions in the Old Testament, these pairings of blessings and woes, sort of the carrot and stick approach to following the Lord, making sure that you're motivated one way or the other. But these woes aren't just, hey, you better keep in line. These woes are speaking to where people are in their lives. Woe to you who are rich. You have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full you'll be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing, you will weep. Woe to you when people speak well of you, for that's what your ancestors did to the false prophets. That's pretty uncomfortable, isn't it? Because I look at that list and I seem to fit in a lot of them because I'm a pretty happy guy and so I laugh a lot. <laughs> And we live in this nation at a level that the entire population of the human race throughout time has really never lived in. So by almost any comparison, the vast majority of us are just terrifyingly rich. We have more than one car in some of our driveways. We turn on a faucet and clean water comes out. We go into the bathroom, and it just goes away. <laughs> right? We are so fabulously wealthy that we can't even see it. And you don't even want to get me started about the end. Woe to you when people speak well of you. I got to say, when I am there in that line, and we, as you're going to hear in the announcements, are going to have a greeting line on the way out again. Woo! <laughs> when I'm there, if somebody comes up to me and says, Pastor, that was the worst sermon I've ever heard, I don't think to myself, how blessed am I? <laughs> and if someone says, that was a really powerful sermon, you know, it, it really touched me, and I'm going to be thinking about it through the week, I don't say, woe is me! But Jesus is saying that. Jesus is calling us to account, to look at ourselves and others through a different lens. Because most of the time, we would flip those, wouldn't we? Maybe not so much woe to you, but boy, your life is full of woe. 
for all those first group, and obviously you're blessed in that second group. We like to say, oh, you're so blessed. Look, you're rich, you're happy, you're full, life is good, and people speak well of you. How cool is that? God has obviously blessed you. And Jesus flips it upside down and says, maybe you ought to think about it differently. Because it's not just ourselves that we look at that way. When we look out at the world, we often look at people who are struggling and even if we don't say it out loud, inside we're going, little tick, 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 sure that they all have brought it on themselves. And if they were really good people, well, they'd be fine. Their lives wouldn't be a wreck. And we hear some echoes of that in Psalm 1 that we read today, right? Right? that the Lord knows the righteous, they will blossom, they'll be like trees planted by water. But there is another strain that runs through the entirety of the scriptures over and over again, from all the way back in Exodus, some of the first commands that God gives to the children of Israel as they come out of Egypt are to remember those who are vulnerable, Remember those who are oppressed and pushed to the margins. And there's this group of people that's mentioned again and again and again in Scripture. The widow, the orphan, the stranger, and the poor. Over and over again in Scripture, in the words of the law, in the words of the judges, in the words of the prophets, over and over again, to remember those people. And why would it have to be in there over and over? Because we forget. So often we forget folks who make us feel uncomfortable or want to ignore people who don't seem to be doing very well because we don't want to feel like we have some responsibility. But that's exactly what God is calling the people to over and over again, to remember those folks, to remember those who are oppressed, remember those who are pushed to the side because they don't have the power to bring themselves back often. Jesus is reminding those who are struggling that God does remember them, that God does see them. And for those who are doing well, that they need to be looking more carefully at their own lives, that we maybe need to look more carefully at our own lives. Because inside, we really internalize, well, I'm a good person, so good things should happen to me. But let us look to Jesus. As the writer of Hebrews says, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, the one whose name we carry as Christians, Jesus not only was born with angels singing and grew and preached and taught and did signs and wonders. All that sounds really cool and wonderful, right? Well, he also suffered and was betrayed and died on a cross for us. So that no matter what we're going through, Jesus would already be there. No matter how broken our lives might be, Jesus is already there with us. Because really, we can't always see, can we? We may think we can, but we, we buff and polish more than a little bit. Right? It may not be always in our clothing, but inside, you know, when someone asks, how are you doing? We're going to go, fine. 
just fine. <laughs> you can't always see what's going on in people's inside lives by looking at their outsides. So Jesus calls us to look as God looks on us, to look at each other, to look at the people around us as precious children of God, people who Jesus Christ was willing to give his life for on the cross. And if we recognize that, and we recognize how great God's love for us is, how can we do anything but respond with that same love? After all, isn't that what the resurrection is about? That we see in the resurrection that even death isn't greater than the power of God's love. And so Christ is calling us calling us to show that love to the world. To a world that so often is broken and in need. To be willing to risk ourselves because there isn't a tally going on where if we have the most toys, we get the good seats in heaven. Instead, we have already received the gift of salvation because of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. And freed from those worries, freed from the fears that God might not love me enough, we can also be freed for caring for the world caring for those who are pushed to the side, who are so easily forgotten. Because God has not forgotten you and has certainly not forgotten any of them. Amen.
several announcements for us to share together. There will be a council and committee retreat here at Zor on Saturday, February 26th from 9 to noon. It's a retreat about um, administrative things and looking forward into the coming year. So we hope all council and committee members will be able to be there. Our Back Again Task Force met this past Wednesday, and as you probably noticed on coming in, there are several changes that we have made due to the rapidly improving COVID infection rate. Um, the ropes are off again in the back pew sections. You'll be coming forward for communion again, and I will be greeting people on the way out. We were scheduled to meet again on March 1st, and if things are continuing to improve at something similar to what they've been doing, we are planning to continue loosening restrictions then, including hopefully a return to masks recommended instead of required, just to get a sense of how fast things are changing. Three weeks ago, the infection rate in Wood County was 1,500 per 100,000. Um, when we met on Wednesday, it was down to 295 per 100,000. A really significant drop. Yesterday, it was down to 195 per 100,000. So we are, we are very much on a downward trajectory and, and hoping and praying that that will continue um, for another couple weeks and we will cross that um, 100 high incidence number um, into a better place and continue back to where we were um, last summer when we were so blissfully unawarely able to go about our lives. Thank you for your patience during this time and for your participation in helping to get us to this point and caring for the most vulnerable among us. This has been a, a week of grieving in um, the Zor community. A number of folks um, are grieving losses. Um, we pray for uh, the family and friends of Danny LaDuke, whose funeral was yesterday at Mason Darden Walker Funeral Home in Maumee. For the family and friends of Don Kreps, who died on Monday and whose funeral will be here on Tuesday. For the family and friends of Bill Ohl Sr., who died on Tuesday and whose funeral was here yesterday. For the family and friends of Betty um, Orendorf, a longtime member who had moved away, who died last week and whose funeral will be here in April. We pray for God's comfort and sustaining strength for all of these families and friends as they go through this time of grief. And we continue to lift up a number in our congregation who are continuing to work on healing. Matthew Delaney, Ralph Henry, Mike Besley, Bill King, Sandy Pollux, Sandy Pinert. We rise as we join together in confessing our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in bringing glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, in this epiphany season, we look for your life and your light. And we pray that it would shine not just into our hearts, but from us as well. That people would recognize the love of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, you call us to follow you and to remember who we are. People you have claimed, people who you love, people who you call to be witnesses to that love in the world. But so often we are distracted and we forget and we worry about our own comfort or position. Help us to be filled with your compassion, your mercy, your justice, and your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing, Lord, we pray for all those in need of your healing in these days. For all those who are mourning, the family and friends, of Danny and Don and Bill and Betty. For those who we name before you, Matthew, Ralph, Mike, Bill, Sandy, and Sandy. For those who we name before you in our hearts. For those who live in the fear of violence, especially this day we Continue to lift up the people of Ukraine. For those who worry that our world is unraveling and that there is no redeeming it. For those who feel alone and lost. For those who are hungry and those who are homeless. That your comfort, your assurance, your healing, and your love would be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Patient Lord, we hear your call to care for those around us, and we lift up all those who care so often. Teachers and first responders, healthcare workers, and government leaders and soldiers, for all those who are working to care for all of us and are so often weary, that you would bless them with strength and patience, with wisdom and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. We share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace to those of you who are joining us online.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with this heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son, and in the miracle of the water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With the bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look for the hope of his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light, bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. All who believe in the loving presence of Christ are welcome to come and receive at his table. For communion distribution, today we'll be beginning with the back pews. If you'll make your way down the center aisle, you receive the bread, and then as you move to whichever side is your side, um, in the trays you'll find the red wine on the outside rings of glasses and the white grape juice in the center. 
And then the baskets for your empty glasses alongside come for all is ready.
evidence that's given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Congregation, please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in our sending hymn, May the God of Hope Go With Us.